Bundy's Garage, John Bundy here. Hey, today we are working on a uh, 1991 Honda Civic 1.5 liter. Um, we're replacing the radiator today. So, uh, kind of straightforward. You have to drain the radiator. Um, this is a perfect opportunity to, to do the upper and lower radiator hose if you're going to do it as well. Um, right here, right there is the um, how you burp the system, get all the air out. So, uh, I'll be showing you how to do that as well. But uh, you need to take this off the screw there's a screw right here um, and then you take this line off as well that goes to the reservoir bottle you take this um, part of the air cleaner assembly out and then there's bolts here here uh, and a few over down here that uh, attach to the um, the fans the cooling fans and I'm sure there's some bolts on the bottom side as well so uh, I'm gonna start here on top get this out of the way and then uh, start on the bolts for the uh, for the cooling fans um, you gotta get yourself a um, container to hold the coolant don't let this fall on the ground you're gonna have a big old mess the high and low pressure uh, AC lines uh, run right behind the uh, cooling fans so there's two screws that also need to be removed there's one right here and there's one uh, right there and uh, they're all 10 millimeter as in a uh, true Honda fashion they like uh, 10, 12s, 14s, and 17s. And that's pretty much with any Honda. From a 91 to a 2014. Honda stays with uh, the same type of bolts. Or same size type of bolts, I should say. Which makes it really easy for us. You know, 10, 12, 14, 17s. And uh, next I will disconnect the uh, line right here. To the coolant reservoir. There's just a little clip here that you squeeze together. The new radiator actually came with a new radiator cap, which is pretty cool, so. Okay, I disconnected the radiator hose on the top. I left it connected to the engine block. I could, I should, maybe I'll end up taking it off there as well to get some more room. I had to push the uh, AC lines back a little bit. And then uh, right down here, I started pulling up the uh, passenger side fan, cooling fan. And you can see it's right there. Um, but the connector is down there. That green thing you see is the connector, and to the left, it looks like that's where it disconnects. It ma actually mounts to the cooling fan, so uh, I'm going to have to get that disconnected before I can pull the uh, fan out all the way. Um, and the other connector for the right-hand side of the fan is, let's see, I can get a shot of it. Right there, that green connector that you're seeing, that's the other one. So you have to disconnect that one to get the driver's side out. And uh, then I can deal with the uh, cooling lines for the for the transmission after I get those out and pull the radiator out. So uh, also these brackets right here. There's one on both sides, um, 10 millimeter bolts, but that's what holds the uh, radiator in right there. So uh, you need to take those out as well eventually. But I'm going to concentrate on getting this connector loose. And getting the uh, cooling fan out of the way. Okay, there's a uh, round green connector down here. At the bottom, I actually had to remove the battery and get that out of the way, get the tray out of the way. It's actually a plastic tray. Nothing fancy about it at all. Um, but I moved that out of the way to get more room. And this green connector was um, a little difficult to get out. So I'm going to tell you how to do it. I had to stick my arm. Here, let's see if I can do this with the camera. I stuck my arm down this way and held on to this part. And then this tab right here, let's see. The upper tab. This tab right there. You actually have to pull that up. Up. And uh, then while you pull that up, you um pull this part out. So pull that tab up, tab up and then pull this part out and that's how you release this connector. But um, yeah I was trying to push it down for a while and that wasn't working so just by chance just pull it up a little bit and then uh, it was free so uh, that's how you do that in case you guys get stuck. Kind of a hassle but uh, kind of a hassle to get both your hands in there to to pull on it because there's not very much room but um, yeah pull that little tab up and then pull the uh, other connector at the same time uh, while you're holding the tab up and it will uh, disengage. 
Here's a driver's side fan. I got it out. Um, here's a green connector I was talk talking to you about earlier. Um, keep in mind when you do this, there's a, there's a wiring harness right here that leads down into the engine. It looks like it's a uh, fusible link here. So just be careful when you're messing with that thing. Um, if you blow one of those, you can uh, be searching for weeks to find that thing. It's a pain in the butt. Um, yeah, so uh, it's also connected over here as well. That goes down into the engine compartment as well. So what I'm going to do with this fan is I'm just going to flip it up and over. And get it out of the way, just like that. So I can get to the uh, get the radiator out. Get to the cooling lines. So let's take a look. There should be two lines down here. Yep, there's one of them. Just to the left is the uh, radiator hose. And, uh, let's see, where's the other line? Right there. There's the other one. So you gotta get those disconnected to, uh, get the radiator out. And the, uh, lower radiator hose as well. Which isn't always fun. But, uh, hey, this job isn't always about having fun now, is it? One thing I forgot to mention is this clip right here it sits on the this side of the radiator and it wraps around to the front so um, it's kind of a hassle to get around the radiator when you're trying to get the fan out because there's not very much room with all the AC hoses and there's uh, the AC compressor sits right behind it as well so there's not a lot of room so um, trying to wiggle and finagle this thing out was a little bit tough tougher than I thought it would be so basically what I ended up doing was shoving it to the right or towards the uh, driver's side door and while it was over there I just stuck a uh, screwdriver down there between the radiator and the cooling fan and just pried it, um, pried it away from the uh, radiator so it freed this clip up. So uh, just be careful when you're doing that. Keep in mind uh, that clip's there. Little sucker's uh, tricky sometimes. Okay, right there is the uh, lower radiator hose. There's one of the transmission lines going in to looks like a 10 millimeter hose clamp. And there's one down there as well. But I was looking, and uh, right there and right there, there are two 10 millimeter bolts on the back side that hold this line in place. There are transmission lines that go into the radiator to uh, cool the transmission. And um, I uh, there was a hose clamp on, on one of the lines here. Hopefully you guys can see that. And uh, I disconnected that, but the line still wouldn't come off, so I had to... Uh, take the uh, connector that screws into the uh, radiator and start taking that apart. Um, I've done the passenger side, it's almost out, and I need to do the driver's side as well. Um, but you can see the wrench is on there right now, and it's actually a uh, 19 millimeter that you need to use to uh, get that connector off down there. So be patient, you got to turn it a bunch of times to get it off, so uh, just work it out. Um, and on the new one, when you do it, I'm going to try to uh, install this outside of the car, just because I don't want to cross-thread it. Um, if you cross-thread it, at this point, you might have a transmission oil leak, ATF leak. So just keep in mind to uh, try not to cross-thread these things when you're putting them back in. As you can see, the radiator's out. Uh, this this transmission line was giving me problems. Um, I tried unscrewing it from the... Uh, radiator and it just wouldn't come out. It almost like it felt like it broke inside there so uh, eventually I just tried pulling on this. It's really really tight. It was super tight but uh, just pull this out give it a you know a few good tugs and it should pop out. Here's the old one so uh, here's a new one and uh, here's the piece I was talking about that was holding up the uh, transmission line. Um, I tried, yeah see that's not gonna come out. So I was trying to pull this out when well, I should have just been trying to pull the line. So um, this new radiator came with a new uh, radiator cap, so that's pretty cool. And uh, here's the other transmission line on the driver's side, which is right here. So I'll pull that off. If I can even get that off. Yep, there we go. And then uh, I need to came with a new stem as well for this side so I need to put that on and uh, but just look how much much nicer this new one is compared to this old one. Put this around for 
you. And if somebody can tell me and help me out, just a bunch of crud. Toyo, Toyo Radiator, Maine, Japan. If somebody out there can tell me if this is an original radiator, I find it very, very, very hard to believe that this is an original radiator in a 91 Civic, but uh, maybe it is. I don't know. It's it's quite heavier than the uh, the new radiator, so like I said, it might be a new, it might be original. But uh, here's where it failed. Right there. See that crack? And then all along here. So, yeah, if I pull that up, oh, there you go. Broken off, man. It's broken. Can't use that anymore. All right, I have the new radiator in, in place. Uh, what happened here is, uh, I know I said I was going to uh, take this line and disconnect it here, but what ended up happening is I actually uh, ended up disconnecting it from the radiator, which is uh, this connection right there. That fitting is where the uh, one of the uh, transmission lines plugs into. But uh, interesting enough, on the new radiator, this clip down here, right here, uh, there's another one here and one here that holds that line in place with uh, two 10 millimeter bolts uh, but when uh, they des they designed this radiator and uh, there's still clips that go inside to um, hold the uh, the bolts in place but uh, this one was actually made incorrectly and it's not deep enough for the clip to go in so there was no way to um, to secure that line but uh, on this one this one right there I got the bolt started and actually I'm starting the the I'm starting these bolts before I put the radiator all the way down and fully into place uh, because once it's down there's no room I mean, once you guys get in here because you're going to hit this one of the motor mount brackets you're going to hit the motor mount bracket and you're not going to be able to get to that bolt so that's why I'm starting it before I put the radiator all the way in place uh, it came with a new uh, fitting for the transmission line which is right there so I installed that before um, putting it into place and here's the new uh, I don't know what we call it. Sprocket lead head for the radiator hose. Lower radiator hose. So it's going well. All right, I have the new radiator in. Uh, lower lower hose is on. The uh, passenger side uh, uh, trans cooler line is in as well. I'm um, actually end up changing out uh, right here. You can see I changed that out with a hose clamp. It was um, stock from Honda. It was an old. Uh, I don't even know what you call it. It's a screw type uh, hose clamp, but uh, I changed it out to a new one. And I did on the bolt on uh, the other side too, but you can't see it anymore because I put the fan back in. Um, well, yeah, it's really tough. About uh, this is not a stock uh, radiator, so um, it's aftermarket. So what happened is uh, maybe you guys can see this down here, but um, these clips on this line didn't line up to the existing uh, to the existing. Um, mounting brackets or holes I want to say on the new radiator so I'm gonna have to zip tie this this down sorry for the shaky camera work shaky camera work um, so that's kind of a bummer I guess if I had gone to a uh, Honda and picked up a radiator it probably would have matched up perfectly but I didn't do that so uh, it's not lining up um, what else can I tell you oh yeah these uh, these these AC lines over here are real pain in the butt dude especially this one right here this big mother sucker um, he just gets in the way when you're trying to put the fan back in and out and gets in the way of the radiator and then uh, make sure you tighten up the right the driver's side uh, trans cooler line as well um, I end up putting a, a new hose clamp on that too so uh, alright I'll slide the uh, other fan in and uh, button everything up um, I need to put the uh, green connector back in and connect that back and then uh, get all the wiring back in and all the bolts and screws and uh, top, her off, top her off with the radiator fluid and uh, burp the system. We'll keep doing Sorry I haven't been able to do it fastener by fastener. It's just been uh, having to have both arms in there most of the time to do most of the stuff. So uh, and it'd, really, it'd really be hard to get a camera angle on this. You know, I could put it on a tripod, but... Uh, just kind of a difficult shot to uh, to get. Maybe if Bundy's Garage had an assistant and somebody helping me film, I could do it for you guys. But uh, 
Try my best here. Sorry for the shaky camera work and uh, sorry I couldn't do fastener by fastener, but just know uh, most of these were 10 millimeter. Um, the lines, the transmission lines were 19 millimeter and uh, an adjustable wrench for the uh, radiator, radiator clip down there. I installed the radiator. Here's a new radiator cap. So what you want to do is take this and uh, top this off with 50% uh, distilled water and 50% coolant. Um, I have already filled this, topped this off. So it's probably going to take a little bit more. Yeah, there. But um, what I did, I got this from O'Reilly, okay? And uh, as you can see, this is full strength. They sell it in 50-50, which is already um, like pre-diluted pre or one gallon full strength. And I like to get the full strength because uh, it allows you to make two gallons of coolant out of one. Okay, so if you take this, this is full strength antifreeze, green antifreeze, and then you add, you take half of that, which would be half a gallon, and then you add another half a gallon of distilled water, and you have a gallon of coolant, 50-50 mix. If you buy just the pre-diluted stuff, you just have one gallon of pre-diluted, whereas the other way, you get um, two gallons of pre-mixed. So that's why I buy the full strength stuff. And this I just picked up from a local supermarket, for 99 cents. And this is what I use to top it off as well. So as you can see the radiator is full. Now I'm going to fire it up and let it get warmed up and then I'll show you how to uh, get air, air out of the system. Another thing I like to do is top off the uh, reservoir bottle. And when I say top off I mean I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill this thing up to the brim. And the reason being is because as this thing drives down the road and gets warm and cold and warm and cold radiator actually pulls fluid from the reservoir bottle so if you have this thing full and it starts pulling fl fluid back and forth um, it's gonna allow the radiator to be topped off and just work the system that much more quick so I actually always fill up the, re the reservoir bottle to the very top so I fired up the car I'm gonna let it get warm and um, let the radiator and the thermostat open, let the coolant start flowing, and then uh, burp the system. How you do that is, there is a, uh, on, on the upper radiator hose, there's a drain plug right here. That's a 12 millimeter. So once this system gets warm, and uh, you'll be able to tell because the upper and lower radiator hose will be the same temperature. Once they get warm, what you want to do is crack that thing open, or you could actually crack it open, you know, a little bit before that probably 10 minutes after it's been idling and you'll start seeing bubbles come out and once those bubbles stop that means all the air is coming out of the system and you'll just see coolant start coming out of there the car has been idling for about 30 minutes now and um, radiators hot both upper and lower radiator hoses are uh, at the same temperature I'm sorry if it's kind of hard to see the sun's going down but basically what you want to do is take your 12 millimeter socket put it on here and uh, open it up a little bit And there you can see coolant coming out. No bubbles, so I'm going to close it back up. And that's how you check, that's how you uh, burp the system. If you see bubbles coming out of there, um, keep it open until all the bubbles have stopped gurgling out. But uh, if it comes out like a constant stream, like what we just saw there, um, all, the, uh, all the bubbles should be out. Um, so that's how you burp the system on a uh, Honda radiator. A um, couple things to note, just be careful when you put the fans back in, uh, do not score the inside of the radiator or damage the, the fins at all. Um, there are no bolts on the bottom part of the fans, they just slide into place. All the bolts are on the top and um, like I said, if uh, you want, it's a good time to uh, change the upper and lower, lower radiator hoses. So go ahead and do that and do the thermostat as well. But uh, like always, if you find this video helpful, please subscribe or like my videos, make a comment, and um, I'll keep them rolling for you.